Hey guys, uh, this video is on early atomic theory, and we're going to start with Dalton's atomic theory. Now, John Dalton, as I understand it, was a school teacher back, oh, a couple hundred years ago, and one of his hobbies was reading scientific journals from all over the world. And doing so, he realized that at that time, if you piece together what we knew from pretty much all over the world, we had a coherent theory of the atom, and that hadn't happened up to that point. And here's basically what he did by taking the information from these journals from across the world and condensing them into a theory. And so he has his atomic theory. And the parts to it are this. And these are um, in my own words, but it's basically what he said. Um, first, all matter is made up of these really small particles called atoms. And an atom is the smallest piece of an element that can participate in a chemical change, which is a chemical reaction. An element is the... Um, types of atoms that there are. And this is what we see in the periodic table, which we will see shortly. Um, second part, <clears throat> every element consists of only one type of atom, and all of those atoms that are that element have the same mass, and this mass is different from the mass of atoms of other elements. Now, we'll see when we start talking about isotopes that this isn't strictly true, but based on the equipment that they had at that time, that's the best that they could do. Um, Third, the atoms of an element have different properties than the atoms of any other element. So gold acts differently than chlorine, for example. And that's true. Uh, fourth part, that these atoms combine in small whole number ratio to form compounds. In any compound, the ratio of atoms of each element present, present it's always the same. Well, what that means is because you can't break apart an atom and still have that type of element, when they combine to make these compounds, um, they do so in small whole number ratios. For example, water is H2O, and that means that there's two atoms of hydrogen for one atom of oxygen, small whole number ratio, two to one. Um, the last part of John Dalton's atomic theory says that atoms are neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. Um, during a chemical change or chemical reaction, the atoms rearrange to form um, compounds that are different from the original compounds. Um, so. This is basically the law of conservation of mass. So you can't destroy these atoms, but you can rearrange them. That's what the chemical reaction is. So that's John Dalton's atomic theory. Um, next, we're going to talk about the law of constant composition, which is also called the law of definite proportions. And what this says simply is that every compound consists of a fixed proportion of the elements that make up that compound by mass. This is basically a part um, of John Dalton's atomic theory, or he included this. Um, in other words, every sample of a given compound, no matter where it was obtained, has this exact same proportion of elements by mass. For example, propane. Um, propane, it ends up, has a ratio of about 4.468 grams of carbon for every one gram of hydrogen. And no matter where you get a sample of propane from, it'll always have that same ratio. Um, one way we can use this, a useful way of using the law of um, constant proportions, is in this example here. Let's say we have um, a sample of ethanol, and we know by analyzing it that it contains, that sample of ethanol contains 31.0 grams of carbon, 7.823 grams of hydrogen, and 20.69 grams of oxygen. How many grams of carbon and hydrogen are there in a second sample of ethanol that contains 3.141 grams of oxygen? So we can say this, in the first sample, there's 31.07 grams of carbon per 20.69 grams of oxygen. And <clears throat> we have 3.141 grams of oxygen in the second sample. We know that the ratio has to be the same. The proportion has to be the same. So if we look at this, the units of grams of oxygen cancel, and we end up with grams of carbon in the second sample, 4.717 or so grams of carbon in the second sample. Likewise, for hydrogen, we know there's 7.823 grams of hydrogen per every 20.69 grams of oxygen in the first sample times 3.141 grams of oxygen in the second sample. Cancels here, and we end up with 1.188 grams of hydrogen in the second sample. So that's an example of how we can use the law of um, definite proportions or constant composition. And the last um, part of this early atomic theory is the law of multiple proportions.
okay, so the difference between the law of multiple proportions, guys, and the law of constant composition is that the law of constant composition is talking about the same compound, just different samples of the same compound. In the law of multiple proportions, we're talking about different compounds that are made up of the same elements. We'll see. So what the law of multiple proportions says is that when you have two or more, el two or more elements that form different compounds, um, the ratios of the masses of the other elements that combine with one gram of the first element of one of the elements always reduces to small whole numbers. And it's, this is easier, easiest to show with an example. For example, THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, um, is made up of just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and it ends up in THC, there's about 8.3410 grams of carbon for every one gram of hydrogen, and about 1.0581 grams of oxygen for every one gram of hydrogen. All right, so there's some, some information. Now, ethanol um, is also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and in ethanol, it ends up that there's 3.9719 grams of carbon for every one gram of hydrogen, and 2.6453 grams of oxygen for every one gram of hydrogen. So what we do, the way we use the law of multiple proportions, is we say, okay, there's, in the in THC, the first sample, there's eight, this many grams of carbon per one gram of hydrogen. In the second um, compound, ethanol, there's this many grams of carbon per one gram of hydrogen. So we take that ratio, we get 2.1 grams of carbon in THC for every one gram of carbon in ethanol, which we can reduce, multiply by 10 over 10, to 21 carbons in THC to every 10 carbons in ethanol. Notice I got rid of the grams because it's the same element. The ratio of the masses, this is key guys, the ratio of the masses is the same as the ratio of the numbers of atoms in the two compounds. So we do the same thing for oxygen. There's this many grams of oxygen for one gram of hydrogen in THC, this many grams of oxygen per one gram of hydrogen in ethanol. Take this ratio, we end up with about 0.4 grams of oxygen in THC to every one gram of oxygen in ethanol. If we multiply this by five over five, we get a small whole number ratio. It says there's two atoms of oxygen, two atoms of oxygen in THC for every five atoms of oxygen in ethanol. So another way we can use the law of multiple proportions is in, a com in a, an example like this. So let's say we have two elements, X and Y, whatever, um, and they form two different binary compounds. So two different compounds. Binary just means there's only two elements, X and Y, whatever those are. And in the first compound, it ends up there's 2.03 grams of X and 0.5, for every 0.524 grams of Y. In the second compound, 1.44 grams of X for every 1.49 grams of Y. We somehow, from some other experiment, we know the formula for the first compound is X2Y, so two X's and one Y. What's the formula of the second compound? Well, the way we can do that is if we use the law of multiple proportions, we take the ratio of the mass of X in the first compound to Y, the ratio of the mass of X in the first compound to the mass of Y, and we do the division. It ends up in the first compound, there's 3.874 grams of X um, per every one gram of Y. And in the second compound, 0.9664 grams of X per every one gram of Y. If we take the ratio of these numbers, the grams of Y cancel, and it ends up we get there's four, well, there's about four grams of X in the first compound for every one gram of Y, excuse me, of X in the second compound, which means because it's the same element, the ratio of the masses is the same as the ratio of the numbers of atoms. So this tells us there's four atoms of X in the first compound for every one atom of X in the second compound. So now we can take the formula that we're given, X2Y, which says that there's two X's um, in um, this compound for every one Y. And in, we also know that there's one X in the second compound for every four X's in the first compound. And that means that if we look at the units here, the X's cancel, X1's cancel, and we get there's one X in the second compound for every two Y. In other words, the formula is X, Y, two. And that's all there is to it.